our first speaker of the night is Brenda, Lan Brenda Lanigan, one of our newest Spiritual Niagara members. We are happy she has joined us. Brenda's journey encompasses many different paths, detours, and sometimes creating the path herself. She has 20 plus years of experience in alternative therapies and healing a wholeness and living a holistic life. Her main focus combines the wisdom of the medicine wheel, uniting, uniting crystals, color therapy, color light therapy, excuse me, and Reiki through her lifestyle programs. Please welcome Brenda. Everybody hear me? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, well thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here this evening and to be part of Spiritual Niagara. So thank you so much for the invitation. And I'm excited to share with you a little bit about finding the balance uh, and using the wisdom of the medicine wheel. So that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. So the medicine wheel. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to draw a picture. So if you look at a medicine wheel, it uh, comprises of a circle, which is representative of uh, us as a whole person. Now if we section this off into four, we have physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. So each one of these components makes up part of who we are. And when we don't um, pay attention to some of those sections, then what happens is we become unbalanced and then um, we lose our feeling of well-being and our health deteriorates and all other sorts of things. So what I'm going to do tonight in the time that I have with you is just go through the different sections and explain what, you, what each, is the, each of them means, as well as some questions that you can ask yourself about, you know, is this section balanced with everything else that's going on, okay? So the first one we're gonna look at is physical, and that's our body awareness. So how your body feels every single day. So when you wake up in the morning, are you waking up and rolling out of bed and going, oh my goodness, this is not gonna be a good day aches and pains and all the rest of that, or are you up, you're, you're a morning person, you're ready to go, you know, just check in with yourself in the morning just to be aware on how your body's feeling. Are you getting enough sleep? Is it restful sleep? Are you getting enough hours, or are you up all night? Are you tossing and turning? So some of those are the other things that you can be um, thinking about as you go through this. Are you listening to your body? Is your body telling you things and are you paying attention to those? Also the foods that you eat. There's a lot of whole foods. We live in the Niagara region, one of the most plentiful regions in the world with all sorts of fruits and vegetables. Are we getting enough fruits and vegetables in our diet each and every day? Or are we eating more of the processed foods with lots of sugar and salts and things like that? And as well, our body systems. We have nine body systems. Do we know what levels they're at? Do we know what those body systems are and how healthy they are? So those are some of the physical components to look at for that section. Next, we're gonna be looking at mental. And this is how you think of yourself as well as your potential. So how you feel about what you can do with your life. So your goals, do you have goals? Do you write them down? Are you attaining those goals? Are you living your soul's purpose? Do you know what that purpose is? How about dreaming? Do you dream big? Do you dream at all? Do you take time to sit down and daydream of all the wonderful things that you could possibly do? Because the sky's the limit. If we can dream it, we can do it. We just have to sit down and we need to dream. And how about when you're looking at goals and when you're setting goals, if you do, do they excite you or are they just, mm, you know, do they push your boundaries? Do they make you feel uncomfortable? Do they, you know, expand those limits of what you believe that you can do? 
those are all things that are part of the uh, mental portion of the medicine wheel. Also, it's your learning too. It's the gaining knowledge. I am an avid book reader. For anybody that knows me, I have a very large library and I love to read and I love to learn. So that's part of that as well. Are you learning anything new each day? Are you discovering new things? Are you trying new things? So all those different things are part of that component. So if that's something that may be lacking, you know, maybe go out and try something new. Maybe try belly dancing or, you know, they've, I know the uh, catalogs just came out for the wellness centers. So there's lots of different courses and things that you can take. So, you know, maybe try something new. The next one we're going to look at is the emotional. So this is all about your feelings and your ability to grow and change. Now I know a lot of people, and I was one of them at one point, I did not like to change at all. I liked, I was going with the flow, everything was happy, you know, it's like, no, nope, everything's good, we're not going to change the status quo, and then something would happen and it would be very uncomfortable and I didn't like it. But then I started looking and I, I realized that when I change, then I grow and things happen and I expand and my awareness expands and I learn new things. So this is part of the emotional. It's about being accepting of change and looking at what else is out there. Like there's a lot out there and if we just stay with the status quo, we're not gonna go too far. And then the emotional is also looking at your feelings. Are there feelings that you have that you don't want to feel? Maybe they've been, you know, held down for quite a while and you're just, you know, you don't want to look at that part of you. You know, some now is the time where that's part of the medicine wheel as well. You know, recognizing what those feelings are and acknowledging those feelings that you have and releasing them. Because it's you need to let go. If you hold on to these things then they can create other issues in your body because we're all connected. All those four sections connect and go as a whole. So if one goes, if one is lacking, then the next one lacks and then it just creates this circle of lack. So just to keep that in mind. Now the next one is spiritual. So that's self-determination. Do you take time to just be? You sit down, or are you always rushing here and there? I got to do this, I got to do that, doing things for everybody else. Or do you take the time, even if it's five minutes in your day, and just sit there and be with who you are and find out what you need to do for yourself? Also, do you listen to that inner child or that inner voice inside with? the soul's desires and all those things that you might have wanted to do when you were a child and you know all those desires it's like oh you know that was kids stuff now I'm an adult I don't have time for those things maybe it's time to relook at those things and maybe bring those desires to the surface because you know maybe that's part of your soul's purpose and what you're here to do also awareness so many people that I've noticed in my life just go, they've got their blinders on and they just go through life on autopilot and they don't look around to see the beauty that surrounds us every day. Did anybody notice you know, the leaves changing as they were driving here? Did you notice the different colors? Did you notice the sky, how blue it was or the clouds in the sky? Did you just take time? stand outside today and breathe in that fresh air and look around see the squirrels running around collecting nuts they keep leaving me these little treasures of walnut husks on my sidewalk and my stairs and my porch and all over the fence but did you take the time to notice it's all about awareness we have beauty everywhere we have niagara falls here people come from all over the world to see the falls. And I know we're one of them, you know, it's like, oh, the tourists, there they are looking at the falls. We've seen it a million times. But have we actually really looked at it and seen the wonder of how beautiful that is? And it's right in our backyard. And how many other wonderful, beautiful things we have around here. It's all about awareness and just being 
just giving thanks for you know the birds and the flowers and all these things that we see every single day all the fruit trees and everything that is in this peninsula that we take for granted so awareness is huge if you just get out and just recognize it every once in a while it's like wow it's really beautiful out here you know and consciously choosing. So many of us, you know, we've got busy lives. We're, you know, moms and dads and we're running here and, you know, we may have our own businesses or we have a nine to five job and we're just rush, 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 rush. And we're reacting to everything else other than consciously choosing what we want to do for our life. So that's part of this as well. We need to consciously choose. We're here to do something. We're here to live the life we chose to live. Before we came here in this human form, we wanted to do some stuff. And we figured it out, and then we came down here. And then all of a sudden, it's like, plans have changed. We're doing everybody else's instead of paying attention to what we want to do and what we came down here to do. So consciously choosing is a huge part of it as well. So now when you look at all those aspects and you ask yourself those questions, some of the ones that I mentioned, you find some balance. And everything seems to go a little bit smoother. Your health improves. Your well-being. You're excited about life. You get up in the morning and you're excited to be alive because there's so many awesome things that could happen today. And they're all miracles. Now did you know, I did some research and I found out that medical schools only teach 20 hours of nutrition for the full term of doctors being in medical school. Graduating medical students feel their knowledge on nutrition is inadequate and doctors don't even feel confident talking about nutrition to their patients. What do you think about that? Kind of scary. It's like, shouldn't doctors know about nutrition? Things like that. So what I'm here to talk about, we have options. That's one thing that I've always strived to do um, in my holistic practice as well. I used to be a social service worker. I give people options. The reason why I am a holistic practitioner is my mom passed away at the age of 51 with cancer. So we started trying to research alternative therapies and things to help her through her uh, disease and unfortunately she passed away. But that started me on my journey to find out what options were out there for people. Because there has to be options can't just go to the doctor and there's oh, nothing we can do for you. Yes, there is. There's always, always options. And one thing that um, I found many, many years ago, and I thought uh, my friend at the time was a bit odd. She was an iridologist, and I just met her. And uh, my daughter was born with a very bad rash that no amount of uh, medication would uh, would cure, and uh, this is just before I got started in this full holistic practice, and she said, well, my daughter was four months old at the time, and she's like, your daughter knows what she needs. And I'm like, okay, sure, all right. So she lined up all these different uh, liquid herbs, and my daughter, I sat her on my lap, and uh, I swear that kid looked at each one of them like she was reading them. And so she picked one, and I'm like, she could have picked any of them. So she's like, all right, turn around, we'll mix them up. She picked the same one. She's four months old. Her body, because nobody had told her otherwise, her body knew instinctively, that's what we need right there. Oh, now it's over here. That's what we need. And within a day, that rash was cured. So... We need to get back to the space where we know what we need. I found it's hard because she's like, well, your body knows what it needs. I'm like, I don't know what my body needs. 
because you're always used to telling the doctor, telling you, the professional, telling you, we're the experts on us. We've been living in this body the longest, so who's best to say what we need? We are. And we only have one body. If we don't take care of this one, where are we going to live? Right? So here's some things to think about. So I've had uh, quite a few clients, they've come to me and they said, you know what, I have gone to doctors, there's something wrong, and I don't know what it is. And the doctor said, there's nothing wrong with you. They've gone for tests, tests come back, there's nothing wrong with you. So if you do have that nagging feeling down inside going, there's something wrong, then there are options for you. If you want to feel good in the morning, if you want to wake up excited, if you want to feel healthy, if you want to have that sense of the ultimate health and well-being, we have options for you. I have a lifestyle program masterclass coming up on October 11th. It's free, it's an hour long, and it's going to be online, it's a group masterclass. And what it does is it goes into more detail on different things that um, you can, sorry, I don't have my glasses on. So how you can improve your overall health and well-being, your body systems, and how you can understand them better, as well as a simple exercise that can help you with so many different things in under like five minutes. It's a pretty amazing exercise to do. there. So I want to thank you so much for your time and uh, for listening tonight and inviting me to be here. And uh, that little rainbow, I'll just tell you a quick little story about that. Um, after my mom passed away with cancer, I went outside and there was a double rainbow in the sky for over two hours. And the one day I was outside, this was I think last year, and I was scraping off my garage doors because I wanted to paint them. And I was scraping away and not really paying attention, and I felt a drop of water on my arm. And it was a clear sense, there was not a cloud in the sky. So I just kept on scraping, kept on scraping, and another drop hit me on the arm. So I'm like, what is going on? So I looked up, and there was this little rainbow in the sky. So it just reminded me of my mom and uh, my journey that this has taken me on with her by my side. So thank you so much for your time and have a wonderful evening.